The squeeze theorem is a named theorem in Calculus 1 that gives us a, uh, a way to compute limits for kind of strange functions for which we can't just plug in and figure out what the limit would be or adjust some sort of indeterminate form um, algebraically. And so the squeeze theorem uh, has a couple of hypotheses. Uh, we would have as our first hypothesis um, that we have some sort of lower function L of X which would be less than or equal to the function that we care about. The function we care about is f of x, and that would be less than or equal to some upper function u of x uh, for all x. And I'm going to put this here in quotes, uh, close enough uh, to uh, the, the value of c that we're talking about. So here we would be trying to compute the limit as x approaches c of a function f of x. That's what we're going to try to find when we don't have kind of algebra to use. So it's all, all x is close enough to that c value that we care about. Um, so if we have this function that we care about wedged in between a lower and upper function, and then this next hypothesis is the squeezing part about it. So uh, not only is f bounded between a lower and an upper function, we would also have that uh, the limit as x approaches c of the lower function is equal to, we'll call it L, um, as well as the limit as x approaches C of the upper function is equal to L. Notice that these match. That's the squeezing part. So if we can say we have an upper function and a lower function for which the function we care about is between, and at the place that we care about, at C, we are squeezing the upper and lower together so that they are approaching the same y value, then our conclusion is that the limit as x approaches c of the function we originally care about is that matching value l. So to give a sense of what this looks like pictorially, um, I've drawn a picture of kind of a weird looking function f of x, and you see that the, va the x value we're caring about there is c. So for that function f of x, if we can define a lower function there, we'll call this here um, L of x. So you see that function is always below the, the function we care about near x equals c. Um, and if we can get an upper function u of x that's always above the function f of x that we care about um, nearby that x equals c value. Uh, so that's the, the bounded part, the hypothesis 1 there, where we have f between L and U. But the extra part, this hypothesis number 2, is that um, nearby x equals C, as we're approaching x equals C, the function L and the function U are both coming together, squeezing f in between um, to the y value L. So that's that limit value for not only the lower function, but also the upper function. But see if the lower and the upper function go to the same place, a function that is forced in between them has nowhere else to go but that place also. And so that's kind of our picture of what's happening for the squeeze theorem. Another thing that I like to kind of use as a visual here, it's not using a great calculus notation, but it does help me kind of remember what's happening here. If we are starting out with um, finding this lower function that's below the, the function we care about and the upper function that's above the function we care about, if when we take the limit on both sides here of the upper and the lower, so we let x approach c for both here, and we get this matching value l, if these are equal, well where else is this going to go but as x approaches c, it's going to match this um, same l value also. And so that's another way that might help you visualize um, the idea behind the squeeze theorem.